right, Mr. Sinov? That's right, Doctor. Fifteen months and fourteen days to be exact, sir. Yes, let's be exact. I didn't mean that in any sarcastic way. I was just trying to do it for the record, you know, that's all. It says here that you have been involved with the prison Bible program, that you've been leading religious discussion groups. Well, Dr. Moran, I don't think my relationship with the Lord is really too important here. I walk with him and I talk with him, but I never intended to use him with this distinguished group. No, sir, it's, that's between me and my savior. Well, it also says that uh, when you were arrested, you maintained that you saw a man who flew, that he lifted your car up off the ground and he shook it, and that he was impervious to bullets. Now, you maintain this through several psychiatric evaluations, one of which I conducted right here myself. Dr. Moran, I'm, I'm glad you brought up this little bit of confusion, which I know is in my record and for which I must apologize. You see, I was trying to cop a plea of diminished capacity. I was looking for a sentence to a psychiatric facility. It is an episode I am not proud of. It was then that I found my true calling. If I might read from Matthew 2, verse 16. Uh, I, I don't think that'll be necessary. Thank you. Yes, sir. If this parole board lets you out, uh, we understand that you have a job. Yes, sir, doctor. I will be employed with the Book of Light Foundation. We are a non-denominational prayer group that works in economically depressed areas. I'm quite excited about it, doctor. I'm quite excited about it. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. And you maintain now that there is no such person who flies? The only flights I witness now, Dr. Moran, are those of the Holy Spirit. No human can fly. Uh-uh. No mortal can do that. <laughs>
Yes, if dreams come true, I swear to you, I'll dream of you. Agent Maxwell, FBI. Bill, quick question. Is a bank robbery a federal or a state crime? A federal bank, federal crime. U.S. national. Federal. Corner of 6th and Olive. Alarms are ringing all over the place, Bill. You better hurry if you want to beat the local police. Got it. Who are you? The Tooth Fairy. Whoa! Oh. right in this way. Got them all ready for you. He's out cold. Gonna have to be my caller. Sorry, but I, uh, done me duty as I've seen it. Oh, well, look at this. Look at this. Oh, coming too, huh? Well, the old right cross is not what it used to be. Anyway, I take him down and you take him in, huh? <laughs> The little bank be in need to round out the week. Terrific. What's the M.O.? The blue suits are going to need it. Uh, a settling torch. The guy was working right in the window. I could have sold tickets. Listen, I'm late to meet Pam, so... Ah, well, there's nobody else up around. Yeah, it's a torch job. Be sure you tag it and bag it that away. Who the hell are you? Oh, I'm the guy that made the collar. I hit you so hard, you don't even remember me, huh? <laughs> what happened to the tooth fairy? Uh, kidding. Glendale just lost a molar. Boys, uh, I'm, uh, uh, double parked out there. I'll call it into the, uh, precinct later. Almost an hour late. Well, well, I know I had an incredibly bad day. You remember my brown tweed jacket with the nice leather patches on the sleeves? Gone? Dropped it on the way over to the game room, caught in the grill of an 18-wheeler going to Bakersfield. And then there was a bank robbery on the way over here, and I made the bus, but I had to wait for Bill. OK, Ralph, look, the luncheon's almost over, and you can't very well go in there looking like that. So why don't you go home, and I'll talk to you in the morning. I know how disappointed you are, Pam. I'm terribly sorry. But listen, at the lecture, I'm going to be phenomenal. Ralph, this luncheon was put together so you could meet some of the other speakers. Some of the people in there are the leading minds in youth criminal rehabilitation, and they all have prepared speeches. Now, I hope yours is a good one. Um, prepared. Well, you know what I'll do? I'll open with a joke, lay a little psychological groundwork, then I'll get right to the heart of the matter, split things wide open, and end with a prayer. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll be great. Trust. OK. I'm sorry about your sport coat. Thank you. I'll see you. Hey, you guys, I'm working on a speech, and I want to see if this is funny. Well, it has four walls and an IQ of 100. Got it. There it is again. Red Ace, Red King, and the Red Tens are the spinners in this system. Keep track of that, and you got it. You know, Evan, if you spent half as much time working on your lesson plans as you do on that pool card system, we might have some students who could score over 500 in math on the SAT tests. How now, brown cow? At least my kids behave. At least they're learning to sit up straight, 
keep a clean desk and misspell words are written on the blackboard 15 times. I'm going to break Vegas in half with this system. Sure you are, Ev. Those guys are going to see you coming a mile away. They love system betters. Now, you want a good bet. You go with the Whitney High Lancers tomorrow. We are hot. We are ready. All right, try this one, all right? I got a new joke here, okay? Here it is. I knew it right here in print. All inside applications must be considered before outside appointments can be made. What has four walls and an They think I don't it? read these rules. What's the point of making rules if nobody pays attention? Come on. <laughs> what has four walls and an IQ of 100? All right, Ralph. What has four walls and an IQ of 100? The teacher's room at lunchtime. <laughs> that stinks, Ralph. Hey, Duff. Hi. Hey, Duffy. Get that coffee machine and fix it. I'll, uh, I'll do it this afternoon. Hey, I got great news. My game, campus days. I just got a call from Mr. Howland at the toy company. They want to buy it. He said we was talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> All right, Duffy. Duffy, that's <laughs> tremendous. Congratulations. <laughs> Six months it's been sitting there. Why in the world do you suppose they finally decided to buy it? Well, it was a good game, Duff. I mean, it was great. They're not stupid, just overworked. <laughs> Isn't that great? I tell you, this is our lucky day. Everybody's coming out. Mr. S, I mean, come on, that was for the head doctors, right? He's a teacher at Whitney High. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. Come on, let's get out of here. Isn't that great what happened to Duffy? All these years he's been trying to sell one of those games, and now yeah. he sells one, and the guy's set for life. Yeah, just goes to show you what can happen when you take your shot, you know? I hear uh, USC is scouting our game tomorrow. Yeah, who are they looking at? What I hear is, is that they're scouting me. My coaching. Terrific. Hey, the Lancers are hot so far this season, 15 and one. Yep. And the Trojans are looking for a new assistant coach. And Ralph, I'm putting in some really fancy new stuff for the game. I'm going to use their own game plan. No kidding. Complete with a full court zone press. And if, if we don't get the fast break on the transition, We'll just take the air out of the basketball and go to the four-corner passing game. Then I'll implement the pick-and-roll offense. Oh, we're going to be so classy, obviously well-coached. Ray, why change your game plan now? It's been working for you. Well, it's this thing with Duffy, you know. It got me thinking. If you don't gamble, you don't win. So I'm putting in a USC-type offense to show them that I can run their system. You're making a mistake, Ray. You know what my big dream is, Ralph? They don't care if you can work their system. My dream is to coach in the pros. They're looking for leadership, Ray. Bill Hickey made it. I mean, he coached at Modern Day High School. Then he went to Iowa, assistant coach, for three years. Changing your game plan in midstream is not good leadership. And then assistant coach for the Celts. And in a couple of years, who knows? I'm putting Kyler forward from guard. Oh, come on, Ray. Kyler is a terrible forward. He's going to get killed. Hey, set the pick, move, and shoot. Set the pick, move, and shoot. Duffy's not the only big winner around here. See ya. You're making a big mistake, Ray. This guy's been cleaning out toilets. He's a janitor. I'm a genius. No, he's some kind of a big-time game mogul, and I'm still correcting papers. I hate it. I mean, we're stuck here watching the world go by. You're right, Evan. I'm going to Mr. Knight right now. He makes me vice principal, or I leave. That's it. Excuse me, Margaret, for eavesdropping, but I think that we're kind of overreacting a little bit. Why don't you slow down? Slow down? I've been sitting still for 15 years. Who organized the new library video system? You. Who's weekend library partner? <laughs> you. And who got together the literary day last year? I did, that's who. Lit day was a dog, Margaret. I wouldn't bring that up. I just don't think it's a good idea to give Mr. Knight ultimatums. I put in for that job two weeks ago. I've got plans as vice principal. I'm going to shape this campus up. Here's one, just for openers. Any graduating student who does not pay his library fine does not receive a diploma at graduation day. In his leatherette folder, he gets a library bill. If he doesn't pay it, no diploma. 
Uh, <laughs> don't you think you're being just a little bit harsh, Margaret? I mean, graduation to these kids is a very special thing. It's supposed to provide them with a sense of accomplishment. I don't think throwing a bill in there is such a good idea. Well, I do. Well, that's the last we're gonna see of old Margaret Dittweiler. Knight's gonna can her, no doubt in my mind. Oh, gotta go to the bank. Gotta draw all my money out by 5 o'clock. What, 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 what? All, all your money? Gonna cash in, Ralph. House, insurance, savings account. Gonna take my little system and bust this big money card game. They play every Saturday, right here in town. Yeah, but I mean, all your money, all your savings, Ev? <laughs> they can't beat this system, Ralph. I got it worked out on the computer. 25,000 man hours on that little sucker. I'm a doctor of mathematics. Cards are just numbers, advanced math, calculus, the laws of probability. Fortune smiles on those who dare. If Duffy can do it, I can do it in spades. See you. What have I done? Ralph, we gotta talk. I don't have time to talk. Where are you going? Oh, the whole teacher's room is on self-destruct, and I gotta stop it somehow. What? You gotta listen up here. This is important. We got big, major trouble. I've already called a counselor. She's on her way over with the you-know-what. We got a parlay. Johnny Sonova is out. He's paroled. He's on the streets. What? My well, snitches have told me that he's picked up a couple of gunnies, and he's looking to finish me off. Oh, no, no. Can you believe letting that going bird out on the streets? I mean, come on. Guy tries to kill you, kill me. Cops are plea for soft walls. They let him out in 15 months. Soft walls. Nut house. Ralph, remember, uh, he went to the nut house. He said he saw a guy flying around in the sky. All right. All right. Okay, I tell you what, we'll work on that uh, Johnny case. But right now, I got to stop Margaret from blowing it. Maybe set off the school fire alarm or something to ease the tension with Mr. Knight. That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, I tell you what, Bill, it makes sense to me. Ralph, uh, you're talking gibberish. It is not gibberish. Okay, guys, I got up here as fast as I could. What's up? Johnny Sonova, he's out. He's parole. Do you remember him 15 months ago? We yeah. busted him? Well, he's out. He's after my hide. But this time, we're going to rub his nose in it. Right, Ralph? Along with the parole board? Oh, yeah, Margaret Dittweiler's going to blow it with Knight. Evans is going to blow it with his system. Ray's going to blow it with the Trojans. And I got to set off the school fire alarm. Is he OK? There he goes. Look. Super dope. Look at him. Look at him. He ain't going so fast right now. I mean, he's running sort of regular. I seen this guy do over 70 miles an hour, run right up on the van I was driving, pull the thing to a stop, yet I took us out, threw two guys around in the air like they was full of air. He had on this suit with a cape and everything. Yeah, sounds real dangerous. You think I'm nuts, huh? Wait till you see it. We don't... I think it. I don't think you're nuts, Johnny. Not you. I mean, you say this guy's a super dude, then he's a super dude. Me and Red will whack him for you, and that's that. Don't whack this guy. You shoot him and the bullets fly off. I need leverage. You see, I gotta have leverage. I ain't going up head to head on this guy. No way, not that super dude. Miss Stittweiler! Margaret, let me talk to you for a minute before you go in the room. And I will expect you to be off this campus by five with your things packed. Fool thinks she can threaten me, waving a union booklet at me. You didn't fire her, did you? Well, if I didn't, it certainly was a good imitation. Margaret! Well, my friends, it's time for us to leave. Margaret, I don't know what to say. I'm terribly sorry. I think you can run a school like a country club. Slap their palms at the ruler, make them right on the board. That's the ticket. You stay after school and pound a few erasers, you get the picture pretty quick that this school means business. And once a child learns that, then they start to listen and learn. Margaret, I'll go to Mr. Knight. I'll try and work something out. Sometimes, when I get them to read Hamlet or Macbeth out loud, and they can see how wonderful those plays are, sometimes one will say, Miss Dittweiler, this is a good story. Sometimes I feel I'm getting through. And when that happens, it's like the sun hitting my own little garden. Yes, I know the feeling. I know people think I'm an old biddy who just wants to clamp down or something. Margaret, nobody thinks you're an old biddy. I don't. I really try to teach them, Ralph. I really try. 
I worry about them. It's not just discipline. It's that I know you can't teach in chaos. I really want them to learn, Ralph. Margaret, I, I have to go right now. But you know what? I'm going to talk to Mr. Knight, and I'm going to work something out. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I will do it. Fifteen years of trying. <laughs> now it's all over. Ralph, you step in my office, please, for a second. Ralph, what's going on? What happened? Ralph, you're making me crazy with this. Johnny Sonova's looking to drop me into an open manhole and weld it shut. Now, I'm not afraid of this creepo or his four meat grinders. I thought you said two. Uh, yeah, two. Well, still, um, the point is, you stick close to me with the magic jammies, Johnny makes his move, you know, and we drop the hammer on him again. And we teach this parole boy to listen about uh, putting creepos out in the street. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, I hope that doesn't mean you'll miss the youth criminal seminar. He's not going to any seminars without me. He's got to stick close to me. You know, that's an idea, Pam. Why doesn't Bill go in my place? He knows everything about busting kids. Well, it's not about busting kids. It's about saving them and getting through to them. Boy, pounding erasers, making the kids stay after school. That's Margaret's way. All right, it's a little bit outdated, a little old-fashioned. But she's a good teacher. She really tries. She's concerned about their welfare. Is this my fault, or have we uh, skipped the track again? Oh, no. I'm getting something. Yeah, Johnny Sonova, right? Where is he? Evan Thompson, he's refinancing his house or something. Alliance Savings and Loan. Evan Thompson? He's into some kind of a card thing. He's staking his entire life savings on this. I gotta stop him. Well, not like that. I... Listen, bring the car around. The bank is only about five minutes away from here. If we hurry, we can save him. Hurry up. I've got major problems here, and you're running around after some shop teacher? Math teacher, Bill. Math teacher. I don't believe it. Well, because Duffy's game sold. Duffy's game? It's a long story, Bill. I'll explain it to you sometime. I can't believe it. Duffy, Evan, Margaret. Got it, good folks. I'm lost with this. That teacher's room is a moaning groan parlor. For years, I've been listening to Evan talk about his card system and Margaret gripe about discipline and wanting to be vice principal and Duffy with his games and so I just I decided I would try and do something nice for Duffy because he's old and he's retiring and he doesn't have any money. Yeah, it could be coming from any place. Maybe out of the sun like some sneaky fighter pilot, Yankee dog die. I've seen them movies. Ralph, you mean you forced this game company to buy his game? No, no, I didn't force anybody to buy anything. All I did was I took the game out of the dead files cabinet and I placed it on Mr. Howland's desk. That's all. That's all? Well, I did take a pad of paper off the president's desk and I scribbled a little note and I asked him to take a look at it, but that's all. It's a real good game. Don't you remember playing it? Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, go directly to the principal's office. Do not pass Jim. If they didn't like it, they wouldn't buy it. I know he's out there. I can't see him, but I can sure smell him. Don't get too close. I think he's hot for the skirt. Maybe we bag her, and that keeps him from lifting cars and catching bullets. If I can get this guy to obey me, I can own this town. What do you guys think, huh? Huh? Talk up! I ain't paying you guys to sit there and grow leaves! Fly, you can fly. I don't believe it. Lost him. 
Hold up. Across the street, he slipped out the back. You see him fly past there? He came around the side of the bank about 10 feet off the ground, flies up the street after them. You seen that, right? Fly? I, uh, yeah. Well, see, Johnny, I was kind of ducking for cover in the bank there. You must have seen him, huh? I ain't nuts here. I seen him fly past there, and I want to hear you seen it, too. I want to hear it. Oh, uh, I kind of saw this blue streak going by or something like that, I guess. Red streak! The super guy was red. Yeah, now that you say it, Johnny, I think red is right. Yeah, red for sure. <laughs> Two more in a basket, huh? Peeps up. I'm gonna have to follow you around with a wheelbarrow. Gimme. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got shorter all of a sudden, didn't you, sweetheart? You. On the back deck. Face down. Spread them. Ralph, come on, let's go. What am I gonna do, huh? I can't go back to the bank looking like this, and I gotta stop Evan from selling his mortgage and insurance. Where are you close? In the alley behind the bank. This is really getting nutty. I get the feeling you're gonna self-destruct. You're like a juggler trying to keep five things in the air at the same time. I'm not like a juggler. More like a guy spinning 15 plates on the end of 15 poles, and right now I only got about five or six of them wobbling, so everything's okay. I just hope I didn't lose my maroon jacket. I paid 250 bucks for that thing. Well, it's not a total loss. At least I got the tie. I've always hated that tie. Seven. You go, it's too late. Looks like we've got one plate ready to fall. Listen, Ev, tell me a little bit more about this card game you're thinking about getting involved in. Not thinking, Ralph. I'm in it. We play in the penthouse at Carlton Hotel, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Ah, where do you keep this money? Oh, it's in the vault of the hotel. In order to sit at that table, you gotta have at least 20,000 cash in the hotel safe. 20,000 cash? Are you crazy? I mean, do you know how Nothing much money that... Nothing can stop me, Ralph. Well, you know, I've never seen a high-stake game like that. Is there any chance that I could come along and, and watch? Can't do it, Ralph. No way. And don't bother to wish me luck. I'm gonna walk out of there set for life. Carlton Hotel. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. That's it, that's it! Oh! Oh! Wait a minute. Yes, yes, yes. What are you doing? Oh, come on, man, it's new. Give me a break. Look, Taco sets the pick. You drive around him, Tony hits you for the jumper. Hey, unless Tony's open, then he takes a shot, right, Coach? No, Tony, no, you let the play develop. Now, you're the point guard now, right? Don't you guys ever watch the Trojans? Hey, man, how come we're changing now? You know, we was cooking with the old system here. Yeah. We're changing because the guys from Hoover know the old game plan. They're ready for it. Ray. Yeah, yeah, Ralph, I, I want to talk to you. Yo, hey, Mr. Race, Coach Buck is messing up our game here. Nobody knows what they're supposed to be doing. All right, Villacana, look, that's enough. Now, you got any more questions, you're going to be asking them from the bench. Oh, wow. All right, now let's run the game again. Run it again until you get it right, OK? Oh, Come on, now you guys can do it. All right. All right, things not working too good out here, huh? You looking for my opinion? Want some advice? Uh, no, I'm, I'm looking for a sport coat. You know that brown tweed jacket you've got? I thought if you'd let me borrow it, I'd, I'd wear it. I want to look big time for the game, and Jerry West always wears a brown tweed jacket. Yeah, I'm I... sorry, I uh, sent it off to Bakersfield today. Yeah. Well, how about the maroon tweed? I like that one, too. Go on. Yeah? Well, how about the one you have on? I like that one, too. Sorry, it's borrowed. But I have a real nice blue and brown tie I'm not using. I don't want to use it. Tony, what are you doing? You see, Ray, I thought you wanted some of my advice about this new USC thing you're installing here on the team, and, and I 
I tell you what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's a little rough right now, but, um, well, it'll work out before game time. You're going to be there, right, buddy? Moral support? Well, come on, Ralph. It's my big chance. You All know, right. this is... I'll try and make it. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Two o'clock. Refrigerator is still a motel for dead ants. Why can't you get an exterminator? And look at these avocados being there four years. Look all uh, squishy and gushy. Look at this. Uh, look, Pam, is there any way that uh, Bill can go on in my place? I mean, I can't be three places at one time. Now, he knows all about youth and criminal justice. He's right about that, Counselor. Absolutely, I got the scenario down cold. We just have to nail these little creeps and put them away for a while till they know that, you know, that uh, we, we mean business. Here. Yeah, you're right. It's terrible. You better be there, Ralph. Yeah. All right. I is there any way I could go on at a quarter of two? All right, all right. A quarter of two, but I can't do it any earlier. Thanks, honey. You're a doll. Put him on. Give me a break. I've got to get this coat back in 15 well, minutes. I'm not letting him out of my sight and vice versa. Because Johnny's out there. Got me in the sights, I know he does. I can't figure out where he is. I know he's out there someplace, but uh, I can't get a beat on him. Is the super dude still across the street, Johnny? You ever seen this hinkly guy fly? He's got the suit he wears flying around. No, sir, no, no, he's he's real quiet, a good neighbor. I, I don't think he even drinks. That's not what I'm talking about. You ever seen him, like, lift the car up over his head or, like, stop bullets with his chest? Ted, he's crazy. You see, we're looking for leverage, what's important to this Hinkley guy, what he cares about. He's just a teacher. He, well, I, I know he cares about his class. I think we should take his girlfriend, Johnny. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to blow this. Ralph, relax. I'm telling you, you're looking terrific. Nobody's going to notice. Well, you didn't have to get all dressed up. Yes, I know I look like every girl's dream boat, but in the last 12 hours, I've lost two pairs of pants, two pairs of shoes, two of my best sports jackets, a tie, my wallet, aside from which I know I've lost my mind somewhere in the last 12 well, hours. Well, where'd you pick up this ensemble? I got it at the school, lost and found. Oh, great. Well, at least I'm here. Where's your speech? Uh, well... Ralph, you go on first. There's the speaker coordinator. I'm going to go see how much time we have, okay? Okay. Ralph, Ralph, come here. We've got to keep our eye peeled for Johnny. He could be anywhere. It's driving me nuts. Hair's going up on the back of my neck. Bill, I'm real worried about Evan. Evan? Oh, yeah, Evan. Well, Evan is a real <laughs> tragic case. Um, but uh, could we just uh, work out another uh, vibe and search? Johnny. Why are you waiting to go on? Real simple. Oh, well, well, it won't take a second, Ralph. All right, let's find a closet real close. Well, there we must be a closet together, together somewhere. These people, I don't even know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, here it is, right here. Come on. Sure. Oh, boy, this thing is jammed. I can't latch it. I put my foot on it. What are you doing with the lights? Well, I haven't been able to tune them in yet, and sometimes when I work in the dark, it helps me with the contrast ratio. All right, come on. Come on concentrate. How can I concentrate? I got a migraine. All right, yes, I'm getting something right. Okay, terrific. Here we go. Oh, my God. What's the matter? You got Johnny? Where is he? No, it's Evan. Billy, they're, they're, they're cheating him. They're monitoring the game from a closed-circuit TV in another room. Yeah, well, Evan is a real tragic case, Ralph, but uh, uh, Johnny Sonova is, uh, is a head case, honest. Bill, we don't know that Johnny is around here. And come on, now, you're a big guy. You used to take care of all these cases before I came around. You can handle this one on your own. And I can't go back in there and talk to a bunch of professors when Evan is losing his entire life savings. Ralph, you cannot go flying around like Tinkerbell tapping everybody on the shoulder with a magic wand. You just can't do it. I, I feel like I caused it, Bill. I I'm responsible. Here, Bill, hold my clothes. Oh. Well, what's going on here? Uh, you explain it. Uh, yeah, you're the uh, raincoat, right? I'll need your claim check. Oh, yeah, that's 50 cents.
Teachers holding deuces. King high. Deuces. King's up. Nothing on the draw. <sighs> it looks like I'm going to have to call your check. Let's see. Can't figure it out. I've gone already. <laughs> Conclusion, I would like to remind you all that uh, we don't get in there soon enough. You know, uh, spare the rod and spoil the child is the ancient philosophy which has always worked. And uh, all of you, with due respect, uh, eggheads uh, 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 working with this psychological junk. Uh, <clears throat> and that's it. That's the end of the report right there. I want to thank you. Freeze! Case in point, we got here psychiatric counseling at a state prison level. Don't you love it? Okay, Maxwell, let's go. You too, honey! Or I'd chop up the podium with this thing. Oh, no. Evan, you're on your own. Singing telegram for Miss Peterson? Uh, I'm supposed to meet a gorilla and a belly dancer? Nope, wrong room. Have a lovely day, have a lovely day, have a lovely, lovely day! Remember, singing telegram, 555-5800. Bye-bye! Come on, get out of my holograph. Where's the super dude? Super dude? What super dude? John, I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds as if you've, uh, you know, kind of lost your steering wheel again there, John. Hey, Maxwell, you know you're a dead man. And you too, honey buns. Unless you tell me where the super dude is. Super dude? I don't know anything about a super dude. Let's go. Oh, my. Around. I haven't seen nobody. Paco, Tony, Kyler didn't even show up for pregame practice. All right. I think I know what happened. I want you to call the police, all right? USC is up in the stands, Ralph. They're looking at me, and I don't even have a team. I'm going to have to start the game without my three starters. Just call the cops. OK. So we wait. Super guy's gonna show up. Everybody's down at that basketball game. Wait a minute, what is he talking about? What, what super guy? Oh, he's nuts. He's a banana. He's oh, yeah? friends, John. Oh, yeah, we'll see who's nuts. That's a winner. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't fight him. Just go over the floor, all right? Just go over the floor. Hey, would you call the cops? Don't...
That's him. A super dude. What is he talking about? This guy's as nutty as a pecan pie here. OK, Mr. Super Guy, from now on, you work for me or this crowd here dies. Uh, nobody gets hurt here, all right? And you show me how you can lift stuff and, and fly and, and stop bullets and all that and everything. Mr. S, cops, we better get out of here. OK, everybody goes. Uh, just him and me. Johnny, that's the deal. Nothing else works. Look, Johnny, we're going to split, OK? I mean, we can't take all these kids in this old bitty in the van. Take the skirt and Maxwell. That'll keep the super dude in line. OK. OK. Take those cops out for you? Yeah, we gotta get out of here. Mess up and I whack off these two. He's got a super guy suit on here, Mr. S. What I've been telling you. Get out. Go on. Get out. Leave the money on the table and get out. Leave the money on the table and get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Everybody, get out. Get out. Get out. Sorry to help you. Well, sir, I don't know what to tell you, but if it hadn't been for the ball, uh, the, the courage of this Margaret Dittweiler teacher that you got here, I mean, that maniac might have killed seven kids and Miss Davidson and myself. I mean, uh... <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. You, you mean she actually stepped up to him in the classroom and... Got rid of him? <laughs> she whacked that wacko with a steel chair, ran him right out. You'd have been real proud of her. I sure was. 
It's going to be in all the papers tomorrow, and I just thought that you at Whitney High ought to be real proud of the kind of teachers that are employed here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of, of course. Margaret is one of our most treasured instructors. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, she's in line for the vice principal. Oh, she... Well, I didn't know that. That sounds like a real terrific choice. Congratulations. Yeah, great choice. Okay, Mr. Knight, it's nice to meet you. Anyway, I was doing pretty good, even against the rigged game, till they tried getting rough. Woke up in the hospital with a whole 20 grand in my pocket. Talk about your mysteries. Well, I'll bet you'll keep that money in the bank now, huh? Yeah, yeah. I gotta revise this system a little bit more. Well, I missed my chance. I missed it cold. Well, I'm sorry, Ray. You know, I, I missed it, and I... Well, one good thing. At least the game was delayed so long that the scouts left, so they didn't see Tony and Paco give each other bloody noses running around like a couple of rummies. Well, you know, the nice thing about dreams is there's always next year. Right back. Ah. I am so tired. Huh? Well, uh, if it's any help, I did it with the principal. I mean, I think Ma Dittweiler, excuse me, <laughs> M.S. Dittweiler is going to be vice principal, I hope. Oh, yeah? Hey, thanks, Bill. It's great. How'd you do with the class? Well, I just, I, I told him that this super dude thing was insanity and Johnny was nuts. Nuts? Oh, can't believe it. Well, maybe in that case, he might uh, really get religion this time. What do you think? Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Of you. 